Hello everyone, this is Crazy J. Welcome to another edition of the Crazy Talk Podcast. I am here with Carnage or J Money, whatever you like to call him. Uh, we got some topics here today. Um, there's nothing in particular with this one. Uh, but we're going to start off uh, in the topic of FAM, Forever Movement. Uh, we got some uh, questions and things laid out. So... We'll see how it goes. This is kind of live, but not like live streamed. So, whatever. I really don't have to care about much things. So, we're going to read this out here. FM, like how I discovered it, what you think about it as a whole and stuff. So, J Money, obviously, you've watched FM a whole lot longer than I have. Uh, how did you find FM and what do you think about it? See, originally, I was looking. Do 2K14 for car shows and stuff as you do. Mm. All these, I heard people saying like instead of just like playing a show, the people that do like five-hour shows and do the editing and stuff. So I was looking for that, and I originally found I believe, I can't remember what. It was the way I got to FM was it was actually in my recommended videos, I think that. <laughs> and I checked it out, and I was like. Like, um, 2014 Rumble. I think that was... And it had a lot of views, so I was like, this might be good. Clicked on it, and, and since then I've just watched more and more of the shows, and I think it's just a great product. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of it now? Like, as a progression of when you found it, like, their old shows compared to how they are now? Well, the old shows were kind of like... Then, like they used to put out uh, one or two shows a week, mm. which is so don't do that as, anymore. They spend it wasn't like as five, high six. production as it is now. I was working on it because I believe back in the day it was just Rom and Sean Nova. Mm. I believe it was just their two was and week in and week out they put on Var. I believe I believe it was FM Var. And now they take like there's got they've got loads of people like recording the matches and stuff, and then spending five six months working on pay per views. Yeah, so it's a lot different. To... And I, I like how what they're doing now is um, like every Thursday they have a stream of like some guy doing a, a promo or whatever. Like they're actually being a lot more active um, instead of like you know just appearing out of the blue once um, like every three four months. Uh, for a show, and you know, I always thought they should do weekly shows. I know the production value would be lower because obviously how they do the pay-per-views takes a lot of time in production, and they wouldn't be able to do like replicate the same thing within weeks time um, all the time. Even if they were to just do one show, um, yeah. So, so it's not the C. What? It's not the CM anymore. They used to have loads of free time because they didn't think. Get they, yeah, they didn't think it would get big and try to expand their production. For me, I found it. I actually found it early of this year. Uh, for a lot of people, I'll probably be like, "Ooh, how did you?" I find told you about it. And yes, um, because J Money uh, told me about it. It's also around the same time I didn't know who Kenny Omega was, and right now Kenny Omega has got to be one of my most favorite wrestlers <laughs> of all time. Um, Who's Kenny Omega? <laughs> But uh, it, it was around the same time I said I didn't know what FAM was, and he showed me. I forgot which pay per view. Um, I think it was. You showed me Pandora. And, yeah, Pandora. That was it. Yeah. And then you showed me another one. It started with an S, I think. Survival. Yeah. yeah. So J Money showed me uh, FAM, Pandora, and Survival. I watched it and I liked it. I didn't watch the whole thing through. But uh, I did like the bits and parts that I uh, saw, and um, I wasn't there for the FAM Rumble that happened this year, like, entirely. I was there for maybe 20 minutes because I was at my dad's, and then I left um, Alvit uh, to go to bed or something because we had to do something the next day. doesn't matter. Um, so uh, I watched the past broadcast the day uh, after, and, like, it's just amazing how I see 
all these people like make reactions. There was even some people making live reactions on the FAM Rumble. Like this was amazing. Like when I realized how big FAM is. Like when I when the Rumble was on live, I did not yeah. realize how much people take their time out of like doing these reactions and do all this stuff. Like doing like how some other people would do with WWE. That like <laughs> that right there sealed the deal for me. That FAM is hands down the biggest. E-Fed, like, in the world. Well, E-Fed, it's, like, basically just comes as a show. I, I, then I just call it e because it doesn't matter. It's not, it's not interactive, therefore I call it E-Fed. There's only two things for me. You're either an E-Fed or you're an interactive. But, uh... I think what they're called is Sim. I, think I don't care. It's, it's an E-Fed. I don't care. It's the same thing. But the point is, like, I, I saw... E-fedding companies skip the time that they would usually go live just because FAM went on. Like, I believe CWA delayed their show just because FAM was on. And that, like, that blew my mind. And I, I don't know. I, I think I've said in Sounds last podcast... Seen... What? Go on. Uh, I I think I said in the last podcast, like when I was talking about drama in the EFN community and how my goals for the EFN community, FAM is like not a goal for me. It's it's something that would be nice for me to go, um, but it's something I'm not like really trying to be in. Like not really having people notice I'm in it. Like J Money, like he's most likely going to be in it. Not only he has connections and friends with people like high in the ranks are there but um some of the things that he always checks up on you know a little i can actually reveal you i will be in a pre-show battle royal a fan anniversary yeah there you go Thanks to Sean. No, no. what a great way to debut an fam on the biggest show of the year um congratulations by the way i'm over showcase right now. uh yeah congratulations on that so i mean if i if i was like jay money and i really watched every like I looked out for every single message in little detail and opportunity. I would probably be in where he's at now. Uh, but I really don't try that. Like, I was in a lot of companies. I was in 11. And I left four. <laughs> and, like, hopefully NSW's not ending. I think they got past that. Um, no talks and stuff. Yeah, so, I yeah, I left four. And people were like, oh, you're just leaving this to go join another one. I said, no. I'm in a lot. Like, I'm probably not going to join anything else like at all for a long time like the only thing that I would join that I have a possibility on would be Valor and that's the only possibility I have right now Valor yeah Yeah. so uh, I don't know if it's hard again Valor all I know is Valor is like it's it's like same production as FAM but not that high of production like I just watched their first live show like it was their last yeah, live show. It was my first time seeing it. Uh, what? Like, how many times do they do their shows? Is it like a like, once I'm a month? I'm not sure. I only I only recently started watching that as well, to be honest. Like, it's like, yeah, I feel like it's a once a month type shit. I don't know. Because they do the... They actually do the play the characters realistic type thing as well. Um... I don't know. I I'm actually trying to get my grandmother into e fetting, like not not her being in it, but her watching it. And I'm trying to get her to watch all the big companies like NSW, COH, CWA, um, possibly. I mean, she loves wrestling. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she loves wrestling. Uh, she still watches it. I I just I stopped giving a fuck. Get him in OLW. No, I I stopped giving a fuck about WWE at this point. It's just so bad. Um, not like how Nana J coming soon to OLW. What? She'll be the women's champion. <laughs> yeah, I, I tried to get her into all this stuff. I, I think she would love FAM and COH and CWA and NSW. But, <clears throat> so, I don't even know where to go off from here. Okay, what I think of Valor now. So, I already mentioned I think Valor has got to be the biggest e fetting company in our community, hands down. Like, I to us, with them being at close to, I think they're over 20k subs. 
And for us yeah. being yeah. that small of a community, 20k is like millions. Okay. So um and you can say the amount of YouTubers who've got big off WWE, there's not that many. Yeah. Um uh, like people that like there's a lot of people that do YouTubing just for WWE and pro wrestling in general and they're they're the big ones if you're like Grimm's Toy Show and uh Will Take Grimm. Yeah, Grimm takes yeah. wrestling. Yeah, uh, he actually does wrestling. Uh, you got. Because if it wasn't for YouTube, Grimm would win the ring and talent and yeah, and wrestling and promotion. You also have pe you also have people like Will Power and all of them. But if you were to talk about people that do YouTube for wrestling, that's like just based off of e-fetting or interactive universe, whatever is your forte. There's very very little people that are big with subscribers um like and then like Gordon Perkins they got big off universe mode and they've yeah. made it at their own uh for like COH doesn't even have a YouTube channel which sucks because I think it would be cool if they did CWA has one but every single time they upload a video it's like it instantly Com yeah copyright Pre music it and it's so bad like I don't know why um like I hate it when they can't make you watch it entirely or they mute the whole video I don't know why they can't just mute certain parts of the video so the whole entire version is not like, you know, um, it just sucks. Yeah, because you go back, we'll go back to the joining bit because with FAM it used to be like there was trials, so like one of the members of FAM used to observe a match online one on one, and they would write your name down and they'd get back to you if they really wanted you to join FAM, hmm. which is way different to what what they do these. Yeah. Or you have to make a review competition. <laughs> the the caught observer is gonna be watching closely. <laughs> I I don't know who this call observer is, Sebastian Lacroix or Lacro. Um, I don't know him at all, but I think what he is doing is actually kind of cool. Cause I actually thought, um, one day I'm like, is this actually think like does there someone actually observes like? Like the Dave Meltzer of e fetting, and then sooner or later I find uh, Sebastian Lacroix, and I'm like, oh, this is actually a thing, and holy shit, like he's the only one I found. Um, yeah, and how I think, like, past the present FAM, I haven't watched their old shows like 2K14, but like, but how they are now, I don't see how they can get better than they are now. If they find a way, congrats on them. But how they are now, like, they're pretty set. Like, I think they're perfect. Uh, NSW. We're going on the top of NSW. Talk about people at NSW, the shows and stuff. So, I'll talk, I'll start off. So, NSW, uh, for people that don't know, non-stop wrestling, it's been around. I want to say it's been around longer than FAM. It just, uh, no. Oh. I actually thought was an FAM was around. Really? Yep. Huh. Uh, well, NSW has been around since like 2013. Yeah. 13? 2013. So, for me, I, I found out about it right after I thought, like, I played a lot of the WWE games, um, and I thought, you know, I wonder if people actually, like, made their own shows with this. You know, used the custom arena shows and the cause and all that. You know, I wonder if people actually do this. And little did I know, I went through, I think, Twitch. And I was going through the WWE 2K16 playlist. And I found NSW. And I'm like, holy shit what I thought is actually a thing. This is fucking cool. And little did I know, there's a lot more shows out there, but that was about a year later uh, to come. So, I I find out about it. I don't remember what show I was watching. I want to say it was ECW or something like that. And, uh, I don't know if Carnage, I don't know if you were there already by the time. Like, this is, is before... It, Easter, no, I think... You joined the tribute to the troops. Yeah, I 2015 joined. against uh, Scott Rain. I was found at NSW when he was still on 2K14, but hmm. 
Mundo apparently knew me as an NHL guy, so apparently I came into Elf streams as well and just chilled and that. <laughs> so they call me the NHL guy, even though I had nothing to do with NHL. <laughs> so, yeah. I found out about my. I actually got invited to be in NSW by Bisping. Uh, so Bisping invited me into the Skype calls. <laughs> And so did uh, Callum, aka Austin Woodward. We got asked uh, on the same day. We even joined on the same day. Um, Callum's doing his own thing. I'm still around, but uh, whatever. So I make my debut at Tribute to the Troops 2015 against Scott Rain, and this is my first time, like making a Crazy J custom character for someone else's show. Like, I'd even have my own yet at this point. Uh, every game I made my own just to use and have fun and shit. But this time, like, this was for a show for people to see it live and on YouTube. And I was so hoping I did well, but I, I lost to Scott Rain. I lost later on the first match of the NXT title tournament. Then I go on an 0-7 losing streak on the beginning of Season 4 of NXT. And I finally won once I said, if I lose again, I retire. And it was against Hugh Slater, which he was a former NXT champion. So I'm like, oh shit, I didn't know that. Um, but I won somehow. That my, my season went a bit better. <laughs> yeah. Who was another champion at that point? I think after I beat Heat Slater... NSW stopped. And yeah. Yeah, and that's when uh, I went to FWW, and then I went on to GWF, which, I mean, I, there was a lot of cool things I, I did in GWF. Like, I won the very first match of GWF, uh, SmackDown. That's good. Obviously, that's not the very like the first, because the first uh, show was, first match. was Raw. Uh, so the very first mass SmackDown of GWF, I won against Austin Woodward. Uh, very first GWF champion, very first two-time GWF champion. Then went over to uh, Raw. Shortest winning. No. There, there yes, was, I no. always have to plug that. No. Sure. You cheater. Um, right. Then the No Way J abortion happened. Then. Uh, well, not him. That was a mistake. He's coming back. Happened on Raw. No, he is not. Coming back. No. Uh, on Raw, that happened. You have Delta told me. So, <laughs> what else did I do in Raw? I became the Raw Tag Champ with uh, Sanity, which consists... No, the Broken Kingdom. You win the, the Hunter Cyples Club. The... No, I didn't win the Tag Tiles in the Hunter Club. That happened, though. Uh, oh, yeah, I was a Hardcore Champion. I... Won the tag title in the Disciples of the no, Kingdom, with, of the Dark with Kingdom. Dom. Yeah. And then after that, GWF just stopped after I lost the tag titles, which I never became the Raw champion, which I wanted. But uh, GWF stopped. We're back onto Raw. I became the European champion. I get destroyed after my first title defense. But that doesn't matter. Now it's beat. Yeah, and now I'm back at it again with the qualifying match at main event. Which I thought, hey, I lost the European title, now I'm just going to go for the main title, but no, that's not the case. Because <sighs> I never get that main event push. Uh, I'm actually trying to do a whole new gimmick and name for Crazy J in NSW. I was gonna like I was gonna make the new car and everything. I was gonna maybe use my real name for the new character and all that. Um, just you know to be different. So, um, what's the next thing? The name game. Oh boy. Name people from NSW, FAM, even COH or CWA. I'll give my or your opinion. Oh, excuse me. Man, I burped in the middle of talking. Uh, I'll be my questions. opinion on them. <laughs> so. Alright, here we go. The name game Joey Gallagher. This is traditionally a game that is on some other podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. The Don't Hold Mention Back podcast. Um, 
the very bad podcast. So the name game. Uh, what comes to mind when I say Joey Gallagher? Ah, squeaker kick. That's not like in Spider Man. Don't really know Joey Gallagher in that one. All right, what do you got for me? Well, so new that ain't losing the crazy Jay. Wait, what? Did you say Crazy Jay? I gotta think of myself. Oh no, I was saying on Joey Gallagher. Oh. Oh. Crazy Jay. Well, I'm experienced by Crazy Jay. He used to be a jobber. Yeah, he used to be. Thank God. Okay, makes sense. <laughs> he can make up with his mind while he wants to dance, or I wants can. to wear some creepy face paint. I can make up my mind. So. I'm gonna name one for myself. I'm gonna go with someone like Austin Woodward, my very first rivalry of all time person. Austin Woodward. I like uh, Callum in person, um, and I I like the concept of Austin Woodward. Uh, at the beginning, obviously, because I was in a rivalry with him for a whole like about a year or more than a year. You know, just this cocky, egotistical asshole. But it worked for him, and I actually li I respected the gimmick. But I, you know, being a rival, I just I hated it at the same time. Um, how you he is expect. now? Um, yeah, you gotta expect that animal to lack of loyalty. Yeah, like he was. I'm the self proclaimed prince stuff. And even though Calum's not around, like we still use Austin Woodward in NSW, and now Austin is just this complete heel. He does the Austin 316 thing. Um, and in GWF, he lost his heart mania. Yeah, like he's in. He oh, was yeah. in the Dark Kingdom. Pretty much like this whole heel turn that Austin Woodward has done. I like it. it. It's completely different than how it was uh, when he was the the prince. Um, and yeah, you know, amazing guy to work with in the ring. You know, the rivalry was. In my opinion, gotta be the best rivalry I've. Um, it's like in my top three best rivalries. Of course, my others have to be people like Joey Gallagher when uh, in Honor Bound, the uh, best. Of, what was it? It was the best of five, ending in three stages. Seven. Steel. No, it was uh, best of five. <laughs> it was me, Joey Gallagher, best of five, and it end up being. Uh, Three stages of steel uh, tiebreaker. Where I won 2 0. Uh, yeah, I believe it's it was a best of five. Yeah. And I don't know if I can really count this as a rivalry because I didn't face him a lot. I mean, I did at the beginning and I lost 0 to 7, but it ended up creating such a story of this this rage of me and this person and that's gotta be me versus Daniel Santos um, like, it, like I got put in a best of seven with him at the start of my CWA career like I don't even know why no one told me I just debut against Santos I'm like cool, well whatever I lost and then I face him again next week I'm like okay then I face him again the week after I'm like why am I facing him three times in a row and people are like oh you're in a best of seven I'm like why <laughs> so you know, you. Yeah, and then it's just this constant uh, fairy tale of the hero, Crazy J, trying to get to the top of the villain. Daniel Santos always takes it from him at the last moment. For example, uh, the hero gets the hope, me, I got the hope of being put in the Battle Royal in CWA. The winner got to go to Confined for the world title. I won it. People didn't think that. And then I became the final two in the chamber. Which I was a second away. If I hit my finisher, I would have been the world champ. I guaranteed that. But Daniel Santos was like a second quicker than me. Put his um, arm submission in, beat me, and like it just fueled this whole new rage. And then you had uh, Olympus too. I didn't fight Santos. I faced John Santos. Uh, didn't actually get my hands on him, but that furthered the storyline. And it pretty much got ruined once I got drafted to Rage Pro. So, but uh, let's see other names. Uh, Daniel Lyons. 
What do you think? I don't mean no mixed mixed comments on lines. To be honest, I mean he does the show fair enough too. He's me the Xbox streaming thing work. Like he's got those members that help him out and stuff. He's not that bad a person. It's just I don't know what to say honestly about lines. Oh, Jim, mine's about to throw some shade. Show. I'm not throwing any shade at anyone. If that's what he wants, I was instantly weird before, as a different character. I, yeah, uh... It was alright. What do you think about James awesome. Kelly? Ah! Uh, J J James Kelly. Oh, wait, he... okay. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> He's a bit of an egotistical asshole. To be 100% honest. I don't, Just, I'm I don't, gonna throw I don't, a I don't issue. think he watches the podcast, so you'll probably be safe. Um, you know he's not a fan of me. Let's let's name some other big names. Uh, CJ Winners or AKA AJ Storm. Ah, um, I, I don't really know the guy. I haven't seen him so much, but he makes some pretty good attires. I could not one. Yeah. Some of his attires. He's very uh, successful he's... around. Uh, places that he goes to. What about Mr. Cameron Bash? Bash, Bash, Cameron, bloody Bash. I feel like Cameron Bash is a very good world champion, but I gotta admit, I'm not the biggest fan of Cameron Bash. Damn, Mr. I'm the I... Rock top guy. Is, uh, yes, Mr. Rocky Jr. I really wanted to twist him back to win the world title, to be honest. Oh, uh, my. We're, we're gonna go with Rannick. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, man, Rannick something. I, I can't even fucking explain. Rannick is like if you took Kane and f fused him with another Kane and it wasn't Kane. It doesn't make sense, but that's how I explained Rannick. <laughs> <laughs> you take Kane and put him together with you, Super you just, Cena because he never you loses. Just, yeah, and then you, you, just, you take Kane and Super Cena and you have Rannick. Um. <laughs> so, let's see. Uh, let's see. Where are we going to move on to? Is there not more? Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Who do you think is, like, you your like most best friend, like your go-to guy to talk to or just hang out when it comes up to the e fed community? I know I'm one of them, but like, who else? <laughs> who said you're on the list? What? Uh, because yeah, because I said so. Well, best friends in the community. Uh. Well, the only real I mean, MSW. Yeah, you got some the NSS group and you got FAM. You got some places. You got friends scattered yeah. around other places. If any of them is any friends, like, I don't think any of them go that far. I mean, but yeah. people like Mundo, yeah. Paul Down and Morgan. Yeah. I think they're all people from the group. And you got Thomas Star as well. I don't really talk to Tom as much. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much the, NN, the, pretty, the NSS group in general. I gotta say, like, Except, um, it's, just kidding, just kidding. it's the same for me, the NSS group. Like, I've been with them for almost two years. And to go outside NSS, I have a lot of best friends. Like, uh, Sam Oxley's a good friend of mine. Thomas Starr's a good friend of mine. Joey Gallagher, Tone White, Daniel Lyons, James Kelly. Uh, they're really good friends of mine. Uh, like they're best friends if I were to name like just friends I'm not like best friends and talk to sometimes I would have to name people like Enigma Soul Sandy Brent um, Mercer's gotta be a good friend of mine he is like Mercer he can be an asshole in character but out of character he's so nice and helpful of a person and when he's some... like when, even out of character when he's real like he will speak his mind even if it like hurts your feelings but that's how he is and I respect him for it. Can I just say something on the most? What? So I asked him to pass a message on to Lions. 
Wait, what? Instant response. No, fuck off. Oh. And that was the last of it. So, wow. He's not a big... So, alright, I mentioned this uh, when we weren't recording, but uh, what was the best match you ever had? Best match? There's well, a, it was lot. either the triple threat match, I can't remember what people are, but it was against you and Austin Woodward. Yeah. Remember that one? That yeah. It was probably one of my favorite, and also facing Morgan Wolf, because when you get to face Morgan Wolf, it's like, top of the scale. That's how much slot. The matches of bad. Uh, like I don't remember that much of my match. Like I feel like I, I feel like it should be if I really remember a match. Then obviously it had to be that good. But like the only match I can remember that, that uh, like I love so much, and I said this off uh, the podcast. It's not because I won the honor bound championship, but. At an uh, infamous uh, Texas Chamber Massacre, me versus CJ winners for the Honor Bound Championship. It's just, you know, this tale of Crazy J, you know, out of character. He went on this whole losing streak. He's back at the rookie starting rating, like a 79. But he goes in, regardless of a four week win, um, loss streak, people are doubting him. Uh, even, if, even if I didn't go on that losing streak, people are doubting me because of CJ winners. But uh, I go in with all the doubt on my mind, except for a couple. And I survived CJ Winners, and I beat him, which shocked a lot of people. And, like, just the match overall and the storytelling um, was amazing. Like, and that's got to be my uh, best match I've ever had. Uh, what makes a good call? What makes a good call? Yeah. Well, first, you have to have a good attire. Like, come on, everything. For me, it doesn't... Preferably... For me, it BS. doesn't always have to be a good attire. Like, for me, what makes a good car is... Um... Like, you know, the attitude of it. Like, your your entrance, your theme, uh, the personality of the character. And it even, it even plays into how... The real life person, like if there, this cause actually controlled um, by. Someone. And that's because yeah. What? Also, if you have a gimmick, you have to have a gimmick. The, yeah, like I'm just pretty much saying, you know, the gimmick uh, of the car, uh, the entrance, the theme, uh, the person in real life that's controlling. And the not car, like too have, simple, like. Yeah, like how the yeah, person. Yeah, I'm a guy how the person who comes in, out and tries talk, but I back up by saying. Yeah, like, like how the how the person in real life portrays uh, their call because you know there's obviously the huge difference like for me in real life you know I'm completely different if I were to wrestle and uh, how I am uh, compared to if my call crazy J were to actually like have its own mind like speak for itself and do everything with its own will I can tell we would be completely different Good. people but like you know since that's not how it is your call not only gets portrayed and how he is and um, how he's viewed by other people, not by like entrance and performance, but how he is um, through promos of the real person, and that's that's yes. what I really look for. So, um, IRL favorite wrestlers are wrestlers that don't need to be in WWE. Okay, so for me, I said earlier, Kenny Omega is my favorite wrestler, and he's not in WWE. He doesn't even need to be. Uh, and that would tie into the other one. Wrestlers that don't need to be in WWE. That would have to be Kenny Omega. I even thought that AJ Styles doesn't need to be in WWE because he was doing so well in Japan that I assume he he didn't he didn't need to be in WWE. Like he he was doing fine when he first came in. Like boom, Rumble, Impact, boom, explosions. Fucking Michael Bay wins the world title. Boom. And now he fell off and he won a US title at a live event in Madison Square Garden. You know, it's. Yeah. Ugh. You know, going from like. Can you go back to the day? What? Who would think that the little kid who debuted on The Last Day in 2002 would one day be one of the top wrestlers? I, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Like. 
you know, when you're AJ Styles and you're in Japan, you were the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. You were in the Bullet Club. Sure, you got kicked out, but, like, he did so well in Japan and in the Indies. Like, that's where I think he really made a name for himself. Like, he, obviously, he got to start being, like, the sting of fucking TNA, you know? I'm a diehard <laughs> TNA. Like, I'm the heart and soul of TNA, and then fucking leaves, and then did well in Japan. I'm unstrapping a bit. What? You are now not the f the only sub in that. Oh, boy. Sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, they are, so I'm going to have to wrap this up soon. But uh, any of the wrestlers that don't need to be WWE, I mean... Man, um, Shinsuke is doing really well in WWE. For me, it's just anyone in the Bullet Club, to be honest. It's yeah, the... like, if you were to take the whole Bullet Club, you'd take Finn Balor, AJ, um, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson. You put them all back in Japan, they they will do amazing. Like, I'm telling you now, if you got all the former Bullet Club members in WWE now and somehow put them back in the Bullet Club of today, I don't know if that would be a good mix. But I feel like... It would be, I mean, like, you have the, like, the guy that started the Bullet Club, Finn Balor, um, yeah. mixed in with today's Bullet Club. You know, you got the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, um, Bad Luck Foul, um, I think that's how, Yeah, the, the guy with the beard. Uh, <laughs> Hangman. Adam Page. The, yeah, the Hangman guy. I don't know. Obviously, like, I would like to see AJ Styles back because he did so well, but, yeah, at the same time, Kenny Omega is in Bullet Club, and Kenny Omega is the reason why AJ Styles got thrown out in the first place. So it wouldn't really make sense. But, uh, yeah, uh, that will do for the podcast. Also, I like... What? Oh, you can do... I will do We'll end it off after what you want to say. Screw it. Go <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, I didn't really give you a chance to say which favorite wrestler and who should or who doesn't have to be in WWE. Have a go at it. But you skipped a few questions, didn't you? Uh, I mean, sure. Uh, favorite male car. Favorite male car. Actually, I have a, actually have three preferred answers for this one. Oh boy. Is that nice here? Pre prepared answers? I mean, go at it. Right. I just need to find the question. Well, I've actually them there. For me, I'm gonna answer right away. My fair male call has to either be. It's like. It's a battle of three people. Liam Mercer. Well, I. Okay, I'm going to be that guy and include myself. So there's four. Myself, Liam Mercer, uh, you have CJ Winners, and Joey Gallagher. So it's like, I can't really decide. Like I can't say me, because that's just completely biased. But, um, but yeah, it's biased. I threw myself in the top four anyway. But I don't care. Uh, and until J Money finds uh, who he wants, I'm going to say for best female call... It's either Casey Benz or Alyssa Bond. Either one of those two. Somehow the same. No. Only answers written out. Ready for this podcast? What? Not for this podcast now. Look one. Just. What are you doing? Like, where will find these answers? What do you mean, find the answers? Uh, it's me now. Let's go with random things, right? I was there, I was biased, I was saying myself, but I was saying <laughs> People like... Alright, anyway. People like Andy Badwell, BH, M Morgan Wolf. I don't like Morgan. Hmm. That's a true to be called. Um, hmm. who else? Was the... I, I really like Adrian Kincaid, I think he's a... Kincaid, yeah. Kincaid is a good call. Um, Sean Nova, obviously. 
Mark Adams. Let's just show him that one. Um, his name. AJ Storm, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for. There was another one. There was another one? <laughs> DM West. <laughs> no, no. West. <laughs> it's West. Uh, guy's name. No, we'll, we'll move on. <laughs> Alright, I already said uh, my favorite female cause. It's either Alyssa Bond or Casey Benz. Do you have any favorite female cause? Well, favorite female cause. Well, Alyssa Bond is a pretty good one. Uh, Lisa. But. Any other. They see the the Crocs and leave any. Oh. And we like Eve, of course. Hmm. Yo. Black hair and my food. Oh yeah, black hair on. I forgot about them already. And L. My hair as well. Apart from that, it's not really much so of a female cause. IRL favorite wrestler and what wrestlers in WWE do you think they don't need to be there? So I can repeat that. What is your favorite wrestler in real life? Right now. You, you keep cutting out. I heard the favorite wrestler bit. Alright. <laughs> what is your favorite wrestler? It, it keeps cutting out. Oh. Like, say the end bit of the question. I, right. I'll type the question. Yeah, yeah type it. So can, uh, I'm not comparing the podcast. Oh my god. Vessler. Jeez. This is gonna be a bit a shock pick, though. Yeah, Lance Storm. The man of a thousand holds. Yeah, Lance Storm. I think it was a phenomenal wrestler. <laughs> and. What wrestlers do you think don't need to be in WWE right now? What wrestlers don't need to be done in WWE? I think probably Dolph Ziggler. Because I think both of them, they've been in WWE for so long, but they just don't know what to do with them anymore. I feel like they'd be suited elsewhere. Because hmm. when was the last time Natalia was a champion? Yeah, you can't remember. Yeah. He is. Well, here we go, people. Uh, thank you for the ones that watched throughout the whole entire podcast. It means a lot to me. Thank you, J Money, for coming into oh, the podcast. There's one. I I'm skipping the damn course. Okay. Because we're taking up a lot of time in SW Zone, so. Um. Yeah, thank you for the ones that watched the podcast. Thank you, J Money, for coming thank into the, the podcast. Question. It means a lot. And I will see you guys in the next podcast. Ciao. Stay tuned.